In this video, I'm going to build a complete portfolio from a blank page and show you the exact template I use and why I use it. I'm going to walk you through each step of the process from collecting and curating your work all the way through to exporting. If you want to follow along using this template, it's linked below. Just cut out the uncertainty. With a template, you have a clear framework and guide to get you started. You can clearly see what you need to do to finish your portfolio and it's always way, way easier to edit something and make it your own than it is to start from scratch. Now let's jump in and start designing your portfolio. So what you're going to want to do is fire up InDesign and for this I'm going to open up the template file. And so now the template's open, what I'm going to do is just quickly open up the pages tab on the right hand side just so we can work better with the master pages and then obviously the layout of the portfolio. If you don't have either of these windows, just jump up into window and open out the pages and the layers and tools um, sections and then you can set that up on the right. I've also got an InDesign tips video which I'll link in the description which covers setting up your workspace a bit more. So now that we've got that, we can see that the way the template works is you've got a whole set of master pages up here. So basically the master pages are like a library of page layout templates, which you can apply to the pages in your portfolio to set the layout. And the way that that works is you can see there's already a draft layout put into this portfolio template. So if you want to edit an object, you can see they're not actually editable because it's in the master page still. So what you want to do to make the elements of this page editable, hold down control shift and drag over them and that will make them now editable. Now what I would do is don't control shift click these page numbers because these page numbers are already set in the master pages to update automatically. Now the first step in creating your portfolio is curating your content and getting your work ready. I'm just going to touch on this briefly but I always start my portfolio by getting the content so that's all your drawings, your images, your renders, get them ready and dump them into one file so you don't have to go searching for them while you're setting up your portfolio. And my recommendation is to select um, between three to five projects with five being the absolute maximum to include in your portfolio. You don't want hundreds of pages in your portfolio so you need to consider if your portfolio is a general portfolio as in you're going to send it out to multiple companies or jobs and it's not just a curated portfolio. A curated portfolio would be for a specific job or a specific company. Now a general portfolio you're going to make sure you've got a range of skills, project types, programs, things like that. Whereas if it's targeted, you want to curate the content to be more aligned with the job or the firm that you're applying to. In this tutorial, we're just going to be running a general portfolio. So this is a perfect example for your first portfolio. You want to make sure your projects have a range of skills shown. You want to be including drawings by technical and design or schematics. You want to be including sections, details, elevations, all of that. You want to be having axonometrics or isometrics. They're always good. You want to have your standard renders or your collages, 3D models, any physical models, photographs, of that. You might want your Photoshop collages or even some of your process work. And don't forget to include some of the other niche skills you might have. So you might have made a one-to-one -one mock up of a portion of a building. You might be into pottery. You might be into furniture. Include that towards the end of your portfolio just to have a range of skills shown. So once you've thought about the projects you're going to include, you've put them into a file with all the content you need. You're ready to start doing the layout. So the first page of your layout is the cover page. You want to be choosing a high impact, high quality, unique image or drawing to put here. You want to make sure it's attention grabbing, possibly color or high contrast or it could be a minimal and moody image but the most important thing is that it's going to draw attention to the portfolio and be memorable. The cover is the first impression and an architect will definitely judge your portfolio by the cover. And a quick tip you can see this portfolio is opened in the preview mode so that means there's no guides you can't see the edges of the boxes and it looks kind of like a print preview. Just hit W to switch out of that view. Now you can see the portfolio actually has a whole series of grids that everything is aligned to and that's a sign of a great template. Once you hit control shift click on this item to make them editable and I'm going to change this title to my name and then I'm going to include architecture portfolio because that's what it is. I'm going to add the date. Now to place content into the portfolio just hit Control D or Command D to go into the place menu. Select the content you'd like to place into your portfolio and just click and drag matching the set out of the gray image placeholder. So now I'm just going to adjust the size of the image boundaries to match the gray placeholder box and then one of the tips you can do is hit Control Alt Shift C to set the formatting of the image to fill the frame. And now obviously I just want to blow this up so that it fills the frame completely. Now once that's done, we're pretty much done on the cover. And when I push W to preview the page, you can see it's pixelated. Just right click, go to display performance, hit high quality print and you can see it in the full resolution. I don't always leave that 
on because it tends to make your design run slowly. So now we're going to go to the second page and I always like to have a little bio here just about yourself. Keep it really short and then I'm also going to place a headshot in here just so the people looking at your portfolio know what you look like. Now I'm going to match this to the grid size of the portfolio so I've just hit Control D to place that in and I'm going to adjust the boundaries to match the grids of the content. So this text here you can see it's currently not square aligned so I'm going to go into the paragraph window. If you don't have that just click window type in tables paragraph and I'm just going to set that to a square align so it sits a bit neater on the page. And now I'm also going to edit these images here. I'm just going to go through here and quickly adjust all of the page numbering and contents. So it does always help to have a little bit of preparation done so just write yourself some notes so that you know what you're going to put in the portfolio and where. Now you can see there's a little bit of an issue here with some of this text not aligning perfectly on the grid. So what I would do for that is I would just select all of these text boxes, hit control B, go to align bottom because we want the text to be aligned to the bottom of the text box and then I'm just going to quickly fix these so that they sit perfectly on the grid lines and you can see now that's all been aligned correctly. And I'll come back and update this page numbers later once we know exactly what page all of the content's going to sit on. So now basically what we're going to do is we're just going to work through the portfolio and start adding in the content and the text, changing all the titles, adjusting the headings and the footings and including captions for all of our content. Now it's important to note that while this portfolio template does come with a predetermined layout, the best thing to do is to look through the master pages and try and find pages that have the correct layout and image ratio and things like that for the project and the content you're trying to place in. Now you can obviously really easily edit this when you're in your portfolio template. So say for example you wanted to use this page but you didn't actually have five portrait images, you actually only had one or two and the others were more square. You could very easily just delete these two sets here, select these placeholders and just drag them out to match the grid. Now that's the benefit of this portfolio template because it's really easy to edit keeping everything nice and aligned. The grid lines give you a really good base to set your alignments on and everything will stay really neat. So now you've got a layout which works just as good as the previous one and the benefit of this is now you've customized your pages but if you want to add back in the original layout you'll just have to create two new pages and add the A master page to them and you'll have those original layout back. Now I'm just going to quickly cover using text in a portfolio. All good portfolios include text whether that be titles, captions or brief project descriptions that's just part of a good portfolio. But what you should never ever have is huge blocks of text. If you need to use more than two or three hundred words to describe a project that means that the images and drawing probably aren't strong enough in graphically communicating that idea and that's exactly what a portfolio is doing and that's a key point. Your portfolio is communicating through the visual and graphic representations that you've created your concept idea and designs to an audience. You shouldn't have to use a lot of text and when you do use text use it really carefully, be very specific with your word choices and try and use architectural language to match the type of people who are reviewing your portfolio. So that's other architects. I always think it's good to start each project with a block of text communicating a brief synopsis of the design and project that follows. But you don't want to see a huge block of text or a whole page of writing describing your project. So again if you're following along and you'd like to grab this template just check down in the description below. I've got a link to my Gumroad store with a cheeky discount code to give you 30% off. So one of the tips when you're creating your portfolio is, especially when you're placing plans or something like that, that are consecutive, so they're the same scale, you can just copy an image by holding down Control Alt and then Shift to keep it aligned in the vertical orientation. Basically what I've got is the ground plan, but I want to have the ground plan, the first floor, and then the second floor. So then what you can do is just click on this, go to Links, right click on the file link and go Relink. Now just navigate to the second floor plan, click OK, and that'll update that image in this frame with the exact same location and maintain the scale. So that's a great way to place like first floor, ground floor, second floor, etc., and keeping all the scale, and it works for renders and things like that too. Now I'm just going to quickly chat through some of the reasons why I like this layout and in general why I like minimal layouts. So some of the things that I think makes a good portfolio layout is basically it's being minimal. I think over-designed layouts with heaps of colors, text types, graphic elements, background colors, lines, artwork, graphic, all of that stuff, I just think it starts to really take the eye away from what matters. And the only thing that matters in your portfolio is your work, your designs, and your communication skills. Sure, you need to have good graphic design skills, but you should never be the focus. Do not be afraid of white space, and there's nothing wrong with a simple page just with one single drawing on it. You don't need heaps of text for each drawing. So don't get thrown by some of those really complicated, super cool, slick portfolios out there. I think a simple one is a really strong way to describe your work. Okay, so now that the portfolio is finished, I'm just going to quickly touch on exporting your portfolio and also file types and things like that. 
The most commonly used file format for portfolios is going to be PDF. So to do that in InDesign, just click File. Don't just go to Export. Go to Adobe PDF Presets. Choose High Quality Print. Select where you want your file to go. And then you'll come to this window here. Make sure it's set to All Pages. And I just leave all of this as it is and click Export. Now, once your document has been exported, you want to make sure it is ideally less than 20 megabytes. The closer to 10 megabytes, the better, because that is going to be a lot quicker to open. But there is a sneaky hack if it gets over 20 megabytes. Just open it in Adobe Acrobat. Go to File, Save as Other, Reduced Size PDF. Click OK and just save it. And that will almost always reduce the file back down a significant amount to a more workable size. So there you have it, a complete professional architecture portfolio built from a blank page in under an hour. If you'd like this exact template, the link's in the description. There's also a sneaky discount code in the description as a thank you for watching this far. If you found this video helpful, let me know by giving it a like. And if you have questions about portfolio design, templates, want me to cover something else in a future video, drop a comment below, happy to help out. Good luck building your portfolio and I'll see you in the next one.